Amanda. Viva MC Viva. Viva South African Communist Party. Viva. Viva Kosatu. Viva. Long live President Ramaphosa. Long live. Long live President Ramaphosa. Long live. Forward with President Ramaphosa. Forward. Forward with President Ramaphosa. Forward. Viva President Ramaphosa. Viva. Viva President Ramaphosa. Viva. Thank you very much. The regional organizer. Let me also appreciate the opportunity and presentation that was done by Comrade Reggie. Let me acknowledge the provincial secretary of the SACP in Limpopo, Comrade Chweni Maliwan, the doctor. It's a doctor. Dr. Cheney uh, Malivan. Let me also acknowledge PEC members of the African National Congress. Let me not mention your names because you are many comrades. Let me also acknowledge the leadership of the region, Comrade Jack, who the REC commonly refer him as the Drago. With the Leadership Coll Collective, let me also acknowledge the leadership of our leagues, PTT members who are here, uh, and also the comrades who also lead the LGBTQI+. Eh? I'm right, isn't it? Also, let me acknowledge the leadership of all our branches in this region. And let me also acknowledge and appreciate the presence of every member of the ANC and every supporter of the ANC who is in this hall. We want to appreciate you. We're meeting here just five days after the 20th commemoration of the passing on of the ANC president, Comrade President General Oliver Tambo, who passed away on the 24th of April, 1993. The year 1993 is a very painful year for the ANC and its progressive MDM structures. President Tambo's death came 14 days after the assassination of Comrade Chris Hani outside his home in Don Park, Hogsberg. This year, on the 10th of April, marked 30th anniversary of his untimely, cowardly assassination. Few days ago, we celebrated 29th anniversary of Freedom Day, on which we celebrate the freedom which so many of our peace-loving people from this province lived and died for. Comrade Sifago Makato, the former president of the ANC, was a son of this beautiful province. The former president of the ANC Youth League, Comrade Pita Mukawa, was also a son of this province. Comrade Charlotte Mateke, the founder of the organization that led, that later, became the ANC Women's League, and the first woman to join and lead the ANC was a daughter of this beautiful province. As we celebrate and enjoy this freedom, we must always remember that there are people who pay a heavy price for this freedom. On the 6th of April, 1979, the white minority government decided to hang to death Solomon Kalushi Mashan, a young person whose crime was to fight 
for the liberation of the masses of our people. They specifically chose to hang Solomon Matangu on the 6th of April to celebrate the arrival of the first white settler who arrived at the shores of the Cape on the 6th of April, 1652. Just like Comrade Krisani, Comrade Solomon Matangu, blood nourished the tree that gave birth to the fruit of freedom that we enjoy today. Comrade Martin Tembisile Hani, commonly known as Chris Hani, was born and bred in Savalale, Kofimvava, in Eastern Cape on the 20th of June 1942. Just like many other Africans during that time, Comrade Chris Hani grew up as a child under conditions of extreme poverty and underdevelopment on which the apartheid system was based. This poverty meant that his father was always away as a migrant worker, first in the mines and later in the building industry in the transfer or in the then transfer. The difficult condition that Comrade Chris Hani grew under developed his conscience as Karl Marx said in reply to his friend Hegel, open quote, it is the material conditions which determines the consciousness of human, close quote. These words became known to Chris Hani at a later stage when he became the Marxist and a leader of the SACP the, at the later stage of his life. Chris Hani went on to join the ANC Youth League in 1957 when he was only 15 years of age. Chris Hani operated and carried out activities of the ANC Youth League without getting noticed by the system. In 1959, he went to Fort Hare University to further his studies because he was determined to become better than what the apartheid regime wanted him to be. He refused to be a black man who is good for nothing beyond feathering the economic interests of white people. It was at Fort Hare where Comrade Chris Hani openly engaged in struggle for the first time. This was possible because of the liberal nature of that university which emphasized academic freedom and institutional autonomy. It was also at this time in the university where he got inducted and introduced to Marxist theory as a scientific tool to analyze the development of society. And he began to engage in the struggle in a more meaningful manner. Comrade Chris Hani, as a Marxist who was engaged in the struggle for, li for national liberation, understood the relationship between the class and national struggle. Hence, he did believe in the alliance between the SACP and the ANC. Comrade Chris Hani was ever committed to the unity of the alliance. He saw no contradiction in the relationship between the ANC and its alliance partner, the SACP. Today, when we talk about the strengthening or the reconfiguration of the alliance, we must draw lessons from the life and times of Comrade Chris Hani. Comrade Chris Hani joined the ANC in 1957 inspired by Govan Becky, J.B. Marx, and others. Comrade Chris joined the underground SACP in 1961. Again, when we are engaged on the un ongoing reconfiguration or strengthening of the alliance debate, we must not be inward looking, but also learn important lessons from the lives of Comrade Govan Becky. Comrade Moses Kotan and others who worked very hard to unite the alliance and prove that the relationship between the alliance structures 
is important for the continuity of the National Democratic Revolution. In 1962, when MK was formed, Comrade Chris Ani, who was a university graduate, became one of the few first volunteers to join the MK. Comrade Chris, even at the time, at that time, with his education status, was willing to leave the comfort that a university graduate at that time would enjoy in order to fight for the liberation of his people. This is the spirit of selfless that all of us must learn from Comrade Krisani. Comrade Krisani did not put his own personal interest above the interest of our masses. Comrade Krisani was a fearless soldier. He was part of the command structure and a commissar in the one case Pelilo campaign in Zimbabwe wherein MK and Zapu militants engaged the apartheid South African Defense Force and Iron Smith Rhodesia forces. Following the Wanki Spolilo campaign, the ANC convened its first consultative conference in Murogor, Tanzania. Comrade Krisani presented the Hani Memorandum which was a constructive criticism of the ANC leadership in exile when others wanted Hani to be executed for sharply raising issues against the ANC leadership. President General Oliver Tambo, voice of reason, outweighed other voices. He argued that Comrade Chris Hani is correct because he raised his issues within the parameters of the organization and in a constructive manner. Today, the principle of organizational democracy and discipline teaches us that criticism and self-criticism must be internally and constructive. What we see today on social media is not what Chris Annie stood for. The hanging of our dirty laundry exchange of insults and linking of internal, leaking of internal or meetings decisions are negative tendencies that we must uproot in honor of Comrade Krisan. Part of what Comrade Krisan criticized through his memorandum was careerism in the ANC. Today we live to witness the words of Lenin, open code. The ruling party attract careerists, close calls. We have many amongst us who are in the ANC and its alliance partners for their own petty and self selfless, selfish reasons. This is not what Comrade Chris Hani stood for. In fact, he was nearly killed for speaking against these tendencies. Comrade Chris Hani saw him elected the General Secretary of the SACP in 1991, and is a member of the ANC in the first conference of the ANC after unveiling in 1991. In the 1991 conference, when Chris Hani was available for the position of the ANC Deputy President, upon being made aware that in the same position, Comrade Walter Sisulu is available. Popular as he was, Comrade Krisan, he was disciplined enough to accept the Sisulu solution and be persuaded to withdraw his candidature. How many of us can today withdraw after, we are, after being nominated by our structures? Very few of us, we can withdraw these days because we think the position of the ANC these days, they give us advantage to try and access the resources that our government has as privileges. When the ANC decided to suspend the armed struggle in order to create conditions which are conducive for meaningful, for meaningful negotiations, Comrade Chris Sani 
who was opposed to the decision, accepted the decision, although he was not consulted as a general secretary of the SACP. NEC member of the ANC and also a chief of staff of Umkonto Wesir. It follows this and other examples above why we say Comrade Krisiani was the epitome of organizational discipline. Majority of us these days, if we get into the meeting of the ANC and we get defeated by the majority of the members who are in the meeting, when we go out, we don't accept the decision. We even try to justify why that decision is very wrong. And that is very wrong. That is ill discipline. And it is against the spirit of our forebears, like Comrade Krisani. Comrade Krisani was a disciplined and selfless cadre. In his own words, he, he correctly argued that socialism is not about big concepts and heavy theory. Socialism is about decent shelter for those who are homeless. It is about water for those who have, who have no safe drinking water. It is about health care. It is about life of dignity for the old. Socialism, it is about overcoming the huge divide between the urban and rural areas. It is about a decent education for all our people. Socialism is about rolling back the tyranny of the market. As long as the economy is dominated by an unelected privileged few, the case for socialism will still exist. Close quote. Today the ANC is faced with many internal weaknesses and external threats. We have an opportunity to learn from the lives and times of Comrade Krisani and the lesson we draw from his life and the lives of others must be our strength as we move towards 2024. The ANC National relies on this province to get a simple majority in the next general election. And, and I want to emphasize that the ANC National, it can count on us as Limpopo because we are so sure that we are going to deliver a decisive victory in this province and nationally for the ANC. The ANC is not wrong on its analysis that Limpopo must deliver decisive victory for the ANC National to retain its majority. And we want to make a pledge today that the ANC in this province is going to deliver a decisive victory for the ANC in the upcoming 2024 elections. The ANC will need all of us to emulate Comrade Krisani, be selfless, be disciplined. We must implement all ANC decisions, even those that we don't agree with. During this year of decisive action to advance the people's interest and renew our movement, we must remember that Comrade Christiani was a uniting figure and he united our movement. Because there is this new tendency that is cropping in in our movement where decisions that we don't like are not implemented. We only implement decisions that we like. It is wrong when a structure that you are leading or that you are part of or an organization that you are leading or that you are part of, when it takes a decision, what is important on your part as a member of the movement is to support and rally behind that decision. It is very much important because because if you don't do that, you are weakening the strength of your movement, the strength, the capacity of your organization to take decisions. 
If membership of the organization don't subscribe to the principle of democratic centralism, this organization is going to be infested with many, with majority of our members being ill-disciplined. We need to be disciplined and raise all issues that we are uncomfortable with within our structures, within our organization. Of late, there is this tendency of people wanting to be very popular in, on Facebook or in social media platforms. You continue to paste wrong things about the movement. We want to caution you. We want to caution you simply because we have started with our campaign as the province, marching towards 2024. So we don't want these smaller nyana things, smaller nyana things that you are raising on Facebook. There are a lot of programs that your government is doing that you can raise. There are many programs that your municipality here is undertaking. And we must pledge here, regional chair and your officials, that the ANC, the the PC of the NC Limpopo will support this political management team of Tarazimbi Municipality and will make sure, will make sure that citizens of this town, community members of this town of Tarazimbi, receive better services under our command. We want to prove to this communities that the ANC can lead and we are going to intervene on issues of potholes. We are going to intervene on issues of water provisioning in this municipality. And we, we want you, as we move together towards 2024, we want to move together with our communities. Our communities must rely on us. They can count on us we are going to deliver as the ANC government. Yeah. Our comrades who are in municipality, in this municipality of Tawazim, they must work as a united force. We don't want factionalism in that municipality. It is our time to demonstrate to the people of Tawazim that the ANC can lead. We don't want smaller caucuses outside the main caucus of the ANC. We want to deliver the services to our communities. It is our time now here in Tawazim that as the ANC, we must demonstrate that we are capable, we have got capacity. Comrade Mayor must move around, taking all taking all the problems that this municipality has. In an event where this municipality wants us to talk to the provincial government, to talk to national government, to inject many resources, we will do so. We are not afraid. We are not ashamed. It is our time to demonstrate to this town that the ANC lives and the ANC leads. Amanda! Amanda! Long live President Ramaphosa! Long live! Thank you very much.